This is SIP for Telephone Technicians. This is Bill Hayhurst from TelQuest International, and we'll be talking today about SIP being used and explained for telephone technicians in telephone language. Some time ago, I spent hours reading and trying to understand many of the SIP VOIP write-ups on the internet, and quite honestly, I just became more confused. Most of what I found assumed that I knew a lot about networking, about routers, IP addressing, subnets, etc. Some had simple, but yet very confusing diagrams that just did not relate to the telecom industry as I knew it. Then I started testing and observing SIP like a telephone man would, and all of a sudden I began to grasp the idea. That is exactly how this lesson operates, test and observe. In the brotherhood of telephone technicians, we all have taught and learned each other over the years. We began with cable pulling, moved up to wiring jacks, and were excited and cautious when we were allowed to punch down our first connector block. When it came to troubleshooting basic tip and ring circuits, we fell back on the basics we understood about pairs, reversals, splits, grounds, transpositions, cross battery, and a whole lot more. I don't know about you, but I never saw a book explaining everything that I learned about telecom. We all kept a working model of telecom in our mind. We had a picture of exactly how things worked. As time went by, we learned more about the basics and we added or we built upon that knowledge and we modified the model in our head to make comparisons against uh, issues when we had troubles. Now, what makes this lesson different from all the other ones is it's written by a telephone person and it's written so telephone technicians can understand it. New terms are presented and recognized as examples and as each one is explained. Here we have a diagram of a typical physical connection of a SIP circuit where it originates from the internet, comes into your building, passes through the modem, through the router, through the data switch, and I'll point out something special. All of that belongs to the customer and it's already in place. To that you would hook up a PBX SIP with SIP trunk capability such as the IP Office Partner Edition. In the diagram that we see here we have the central office on the left hand side. Between the central office and the PBX we have a single pair. That pair is, in this simple example here, is a simple uh, single copper pair that extends one telephone number over to the central office, from the central office to the PBX which would normally be terminated on a single uh, CO line position. In the diagram up above we have the new way of doing it. In this case here, as for, for example purposes only, the central office is delivering dial tone over a single copper pair representing one voice channel or one SIP channel to the internet telephone service provider. The internet telephone service provider then makes that dial tone available to you no matter where you might be located over the internet. And we can see there that it's extended to the PBX. Well, that concludes today's lesson on SIP trunking and explanation for telephone technicians. If you have any other further questions, please call your TelQuest representative at the number on the screen. Once again, thank you for watching.